Well, hello there! I hope you're having an amazing day! Today, we are going to cover a very significant topic, which is very commonly neglected by most people, and that is proper naming conventions. This might seem like a dumb theme for our today's video, but it's actually really important, because if you learn to name your variables, functions, and everything properly, you'll be on the right path to becoming an amazing programmer, because the distinction between good and great programmers is not in knowing the syntax of a language, it's in those details, it's in small things, and naming is certainly one of those. The first thing we are going to reference right now is so-called the principle of least surprise. I don't know if you heard about it, but it's this like principle which states that you should write code that should not surprise the person looking at it after you. So if you are not the person who wrote the code and you take a look at the code, it should be intuitive to you based on the naming and the other conventions and rules that the code follows. So we're going to try to investigate this a bit deeper and explain why it's so important. Of course, it's not always possible to name our functions and variables and everything, so it makes sense from the first glance. Sometimes it is necessary to give further explanation, but we should always strive towards naming the stuff properly and thus enabling other people to understand it much easier and quicker. I hope you get the point of it. So, conventions. Why use them? The answer is very simple. There are two main premises which should indicate to us that using conventions is very beneficial. So basically, if we are working as a part of a team on some huge project, for example, it would be much easier if all the programmers are using same coding conventions. They name their variables the same way, they name their files the same way, and everything will look like a only single person was creating the entire project. If everybody was using their personal preferences, the code would look very, very bad. You have to be aware of that fact, because all of us have our personal preferences, we like something done in a specific way that does not agree always with the other people, so... Yeah, that's why conventions are really important. And the other point is the fact that if you use conventions, all of your projects will basically look the same again. So wherever you are working and writing code, it will basically look the same. So you do not have to think very hard about what you wanted to achieve in some of your legacy projects that you built a couple of years ago, because you know that you're following the same set of rules all the time, and you know what to expect, basically. Okay, enough theory crafting. Let's get started and get our hands dirty in some real action here. So, the first topic we are going to discuss is how to name our files properly. When it comes to naming files, we have to follow very simple rules. So everything is going to be in lowercase. No uppercase letters whatsoever are to be found. And wherever you have the finished word, you add underscore instead of space or dot or whatever other separator you're used to using. So in Rust, for naming files, we use only underscore. And yeah, there is another simple rule. You cannot start a file name with a number. You can always easily just move numbers to a different position in the name and you'll be good for it. So yeah, you do not have to pay too much attention to that. It's very intuitive. The name of the file would either way look weird if it started with a number. So that's why just start it with letters. Let's now see all of that in practice. We have a set of four potential file names here and Let's see if they look okay to you. Do you think these file names are following the guidelines we just named? I'm going to show you which ones are okay and which ones are not. Let's go one at a time. So, the first one, nah. The second one, not again. The third one, not good. And the last one, not good as well. I want you to pause this video right now 
and spend a few moments thinking about the way you would name these files after hearing the conventions you're supposed to be using. And I suggest you to write down your answers because it would be easier for you to compare them to the ones I'm going to provide as soon as we continue our video. Three, two, one, go! Great, let's check the answers. So, the only thing we need to do in the first example is to introduce the underscore character between test and one to three numbers, because you want to separate them and make them more readable. Everything else is fine. The second example has test test words connected and there is nothing as a separator between them, so we're going to make them lowercase, as we said, and we're going to introduce underscore between one test and the second test. When it comes to the third example, we already have a separator, but it's not the one we want to be using in Rust. So we're going to switch the dash with underscore, and also we're going to make the other characters lowercase. And the final example seems to be using underscores as separators, which is okay, but also it starts with a number and we said that that's not okay. So the first thing we are going to move numbers to some more meaningful location in the name, which is probably at the end of it. And also we need to make all the characters lowercase. I'm sure that you did great. Our next topic here are going to be variables. The naming convention for variables is basically exactly the same as it is for files. The only main difference here is the fact that variables do not have extensions in the end. For your files, you had the name of the file followed by dot and then the extension of the file. Because we were practicing with all Rust files and Rust files have rs file extension, we had name.rs. And when it comes to variables, we do not have the dot and then extension. In our examples here, we're going to have variable name, which is going to be all lowercase letters, and the separators are again going to be underscores. And we are already done with variable naming. It was very simple, right? Well, things are about to get even simpler because the functions are supposed to be named in exactly the same fashion as variables. We are following exactly the same rules, all lowercase letters, and for separators, we are using underscores. But if it's all the same, why are we wasting our time here? This is so simple, right? Well, things are about to get interesting here. Our next topic are going to be constants. So, as you can see, constant names are screaming at us. We can see all the uppercase letters. We do not have any lowercase letters whatsoever. And as separators, we are again using underscores. When working with constants, you know you are just using uppercase letters. So, it's fairly straightforward. Our next topic are going to be structs and traits. I know that you're still not familiar with these terms, but there's something like, if you come from the C-sharp background, there's something like classes and interfaces, respectively. So, the naming convention for structs and traits in Rust is basically exactly the same as naming convention for classes and interfaces in C-sharp. So, we're using the so-called Pascal case. This means you're starting each word with a capital letter, but only a single capital letter, and you have no separators in between. Words are completely tied together, and each word is starting with a capital letter, and that's basically it. Everything else is the same. When it comes to instances of your structs, the naming convention is exactly the same as is for variables. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Because even though we are talking about struct instances, they are still variables. So they should be named exactly the same as regular variables would. Yeah, and of course, when it comes to traits, everything I just mentioned is exactly the same. Traits, 
and structs are following exactly the same rules. No differences whatsoever. Well, alrighty then. We managed to cover all the essentials in Rust and how to properly name them. Now, there is only a couple more details left for us to cover. The first topic I would like to cover is how you should name your variables, functions, files, or whatever in order to make them more readable and to name them in such a fashion to actually explain stuff to the reader or to the person who is maintaining the code and, and is looking at it after you have written it. What I'm talking about here is, for example, you have some function and you don't know how to name it. And you can name it something completely generic, which is not going to present any value to the person looking at it after you have written it, or you can name it in such a fashion to actually present the person with some actual value when they read the name of the function. I know this might not sound so clear to you right now, and that is why I would like to take you to a journey in Visual Studio Code. Let's go then! And we're back in our natural habitat. It's time to create a new project and to show you what I actually mean when I said that naming and the way we name our functions and variables and everything else is very important and significant, even though it may not sound like it. So, to get things started, let's make a function that is, for example, going to add two numbers and return the value of the sum. We are going to name this function x, or something else meaningless completely. And let's call it from our main function. Now, when you take a look at this code, when you see the name x for a function, it doesn't tell you a lot about it, doesn't it? You have to take a closer look into the logic of the function in order to figure out what it does, actually. That might be fairly simple in this example, because the function does a very simple thing and it's very obvious what the thing is, but functions can be a lot more complex than this one. So, for those cases, the significance of a proper naming is a hundred times bigger than now. So, let us change the name of our function to something more meaningful. For example, sum of parameters. And when somebody is going to call this function from the main function, they know basically what to expect because the name of the function is going to tell a lot to them. This was a very brief explanation. I don't want to waste your time any longer, but I had to show it to you and to emphasize once again how important it is to actually name our variables and functions in a proper and meaningful way. So, that was it. Welcome back! We managed to cover the naming conventions. It was that simple. I mean, we just covered the basics, but we will extend on them as we progress through new and new topics. So, I did not want to trouble you with too much new topics that are not familiar to you, we will be learning about the naming conventions for those things as we progress throughout the course. But right now you have the basic understanding of how you should name stuff. And the topic I have prepared for you in our next video is going to be commenting and documenting our code. And there is only one thing left, and that is to wish you an amazing day. I hope you're going to join me on the next video and goodbye.